Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. Today with a special video for you guys. As you might know, I own a 4C, an Alfa Romeo 4C, which I have uh, roughly now for two years. Uh, ever since I started this channel and uploading videos to YouTube, I never got around to actually make a video about my own car. You might have seen my car in, well, s separate videos, some small shots, uh, so now and then, especially so during rallies and all that stuff. But never got around to properly do a sort of review video about my car. So today that uh, has all been changed. Today I'll be recording my own uh, 4C. Tell you everything about it. All the positive things, all the special things, also the negative things. So sit tight, stay tuned and let's start the show. So this is my car, the Alfa Romeo 4C Coupe, it's from uh, build year 2014, September and I have it roughly two years now since October 2017. So let's start off with the exterior of the car. This color is called Grigio Basalto or gr Basalt Grey. It's a standard uh, metallic uh, color from Alfa Romeo itself. So the car is very uh, small in comparison to other cars. The car only measures uh, 3.9 meters in length, 2.1 meters in width and almost 1.2 meters uh, in height. US or Imperial uh, Measurements I'll put uh, down uh, in the uh, description below. Uh, the car is uh, uh, again very low and uh, every speed bump on the way is a possible hazard. As you can see the car is sitting very low and the point at, at the front of the car is prone to you know be uh, subjected to speed bumps and scra scrapes. So that's uh, always one uh, point to remember. So every speed bump on the way I usually take at an angle, so avoiding uh, scrape damage. So the car is uh, as again built uh, per per very compact, it's not that big. And at the time when Alfa Romeo built this car it was all about uh, weight saving and light weight. So the car is mainly uh, comprised of uh, ca uh, car a carbon material, carbon uh, fiber that is. And it's actually built by Maserati in, uh, in Modena, in uh, Italy. So the car is constructed around a carbon top and other uh, components used are uh, fiberglass-like components and uh, also aluminum to keep the weight down. So as a result of all that, the car only weighs 895 kilograms uh, dry. The Spider, which is the uh, convertible variant, uh, weighs in at approximately 940 kilograms, so also very light. The car is uh, rear wheel driven. Its engine is a 1750 TBI engine. It's a four cylinder turbocharged engine. It's producing a 240 brake horsepower. And because it's such a small and lightweight car, it hasn't doesn't need all that much more uh, power because the 0 to 100 kilometers acceleration time is around four and a half seconds so it doesn't make sense to put in more horsepower and more power although it's possible of course but from factory it's 240 and in my opinion it's more than enough but of course it all depends on your taste and what you think fits the car. So this car nowadays doesn't have a whole lot of competitors out there which resemble this car in its way it's been built and its purpose with uh, with its build. Uh, I think the Lotus Elise and Alpine A110 are its most 
close and uh, competitors out there and to some extent also Porsche, the Porsche Boxster or the 718 it's called nowadays um, but yeah not a whole lot of cars which offer this kind of well drive and feel so as far as exterior goes this car is not exactly stock anymore so the first and foremost is that I have installed a PPF paint protection film on uh, some major components to the car especially at the front so the front bumper is PPF the hood the both fenders here on both sides the side skirt the doors and also the roof have all PPF on them and that's because stone chipping is always a hazard always a risk especially when driving during rallies and because stone chipping is always a waste I thought well you know you can uh, go ahead and uh, install the PPF I think it's a major and worthwhile investment keeping the cars well pra practically new when it came out of the factory so yeah also I installed some carbon fiber parts to the car these are the carbon fiber mirror covers also the exterior door triangle over here and the carbon fiber lip spoiler over here and lastly I also put on some carbon fiber mud guards right here because these side skirts over here because they start at an angle more towards the inner of the car stone chips over here get easily damage the side skirt and although they have PPF on them I thought well you know keeping the PPF as strong and as uh, uh, new as possible I also put some mud guards on them they also are in carbon fiber so it matches the looks from the mirror covers so yeah not both uh, elegant and also sporty but also functional as well So welcome to the 4C's interior, as you can see it's a two-seater if you weren't aware of by now. Um, so the carbon fiber top is visible all around, as you can see when you enter the car you already, already see the carbon fiber top here and it extends a little forward and a little backward. In fact it does go up as high as this level I think, like this something. All of that is all, all carbon fiber. So you sit relatively low to the ground. The chairs, the seats are relatively flat mounted and uh, they do offer a lot of side support though. However, because the car is uh, all about lightweight, the car and uh, the seats are pretty fir firm and harsh. So they're not meant to be, you know, uh, to be set on for quite a long time. It's mainly track focused, you could say. And the side bolts here, they keep you nice in place. But again, it's not built for comfort, comfort purposes. As for this interior, it's pretty basic uh, inside here. You have your controls for your windows and your mirrors. Uh, this is the famous Alfa Romeo DNA button which stands for dynamic, neutral and all weather and controls uh, the, the car's characteristics mainly uh, mainly when it comes to throttle response and all that stuff hazard lights of course and this is the controls for the uh, transmission so uh, besides of course the controls here you also have the flippers which are mounted at the back of the steering wheel down here there's the uh, AC some switches and toggles this is for the fog lights this is the AC this is for closing and uh, opening the, uh, the doors and this is your heated side uh, mirror uh, button radio of course so that's pretty basic if you ask me not a whole lot to see here in the interior two airbags one at the steering wheel and one here at for the side for the passenger 
the four air vents and that's basically the interior so not a whole lot to see here so the car doesn't have a lot of uh, space to put things in here's a little sports pouch underneath the dashboard here and also this cup, ho this cup holder and this cup holder here and there's a little storage pouch over here you can have a uh, more or less a box which uh, is placed where the 4C logo is but that's an option that this car didn't have so yeah of course the 12 volt socket over here so this is the interior of the car and then so let me get inside to show you a, a, a little bit better and also tell you all th things about the uh, negative sides of this car when it comes to the interior um, well as you can see I fit relatively well let me just flip the camera here so you can see how much headspace there's still left put it on this side so I'm 187, I'm about 6 foot 1 and I have a little bit of space left which is well, I guess it's 4 centimeters or so, 2 inches so not a whole lot of headspace um, that's the, something to keep in mind this car is not very practical to for long people one day I had a uh, photographer with me who wanted to shoot uh, some uh, photos of this car and he was 195 or something like that and his head came to this roof here so not a whole lot of space so tall people keep in mind not a car for you so earlier on I told you about the lightweight purpose of this car as it's built with that means that a lot of uh, options when it comes to comfort are not present on this car so first and foremost, and one of the options which is not available, which is so basic, is the uh, power steering. So no power steering on this car, and that's pretty noticeable, especially at lower speeds, or pulling out of a uh, parking lot or something like that. You have to really, you know, put in some uh, elbow grease, or, you know, work it, work it hard to turn, uh, turn the steering wheel. And also, one of the main features also not present is the uh, cruise control which is an option but this car did not have so that's unfortunate so longer distances with this car are not that comfortable because I well, have to keep my foot on the acceleration at a constant angle all time so not a whole lot of fun also I told you earlier there's not a whole lot of storage space and to show that and demonstrate that uh, let's show the boot here at the rear of the car so So this is the boot space, it's very small, you can fit in like two, maybe three larger grocery bags and then it's then it's topped, full, then it's completely full. And speaking of the uh, boot, uh, here's the engine, it's mounted as a uh, mid-engine car, this car, the engine is. Uh, it's a again 1750 TBI four cylinder turbocharged engine produces 240 horsepower and 300 feet of newton meter f newton meters of torque sorry um, top speed of this car is 258 kilometers an hour which is 160 miles per hour so yeah as you can see it's all covered up all the components that in the engine bay so it's not a whole lot of uh, at home and do-it-yourself uh, engine management so yeah this is the rear of the car so this is what the dashboard looks like I've turned on the car uh, for a while the center uh, speed uh, speedometer is on visible uh, together with the uh, rev counter of course on the right here on the right you see the uh, fuel temperature on the left side of course and the 
trip or board computer it houses also the uh, different uh, settings uh, of course time and date language passenger airbag daylight you can control and that's pretty much it so no uh, fancy navigation or stuff on the center uh, console here so yeah also pretty basic again and the backlighting in this case is red the background is red and that changes depending on which setting the DNA button is in this case because it's in D the background is red when put in neutral it's gray and when it's in all weather it's blue so let me turn on the car so we'll be uh, getting into the driving part of the review so you can also hear the engine Welcome to this uh, driving part of the video of the review. So uh, let's get on the way. So I had this car for almost two years now, and uh, I have to say I didn't regret the buying this car. I've had a lot of fun with it. Uh, the car has already run 117,000 kilometers already. Uh, in my time, in my ownership, I have put on around 10,000 kilometers in two years, so that's not a whole lot. I am the uh, third owner of this car. Uh, the first two owners uh, put on the most kilometers, and in fact the second uh, owner put on the most. The first owner did not a whole lot with it, he thought uh, he could buy this car as an investment. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, get a good uh, price out of it uh, after it. That, that wasn't exactly the case and the second owner well he did uh, the most kilometers on this car he had this car as a daily and in the Netherlands that's pretty rare especially with the kilometers he did because he had the car for nearly three years and in that time he put on something about 90 thousand kilometers on the clock so that's like 30,000 kilometers annually and in the Netherlands, that's, a, that's getting to a point that's almost uh, too expensive to drive a petrol car. So yeah, a lot of kilometers put on the car, but that must have been a, really, uh, a great time for this guy. To put on 90,000 kilometers in almost three years and drive this car daily, that must have been a dream. So yeah, I only own this car for two years now, it's again, two, only 10,000 kilometers on the clock uh, by me. And I think for a car that's only used in the weekend, that's okay. But this car is pretty economical when it comes to driving. That's because the car is so lightweight and the car only has a 1750 TBI engine in it. Not like a 3 liter V6 or a 4 liter V8 or anything like that, so that also has a lot to do with it. And on average, when I drive this car, I drive roughly 12 13 kilometers per liter gallon or per liter uh, petrol, so fairly economical. That's around uh, 7, li 7 liters on every 100 kilometers, that equates uh, to the same thing. So, relatively cheap to drive then, but well, also you get the uh, supercar performance or sports car performance. So, yeah, a lot of uh, playing for your cash. As you might notice, this car is pretty loud when you drive it. 
I drive, I'm currently driving 80 kilometers an hour now, and I have to really, no, I have not to shout uh, at the camera, but I have to, uh, you know, put more effort in uh, talking to the camera, because the car has so little noise isolation, and the car is so relatively hardcore, uh, any conversation in the car is pretty long, pretty hard. Especially when you get uh, at certain uh, at certain RPM levels, conversation in this car is pretty oh, pretty hard. So when driving this car, the car is so direct. As I said, this car does not have power steering, so every bump, every little pebble, even on the on the road, is you notice it immediately during the. Uh, through the uh, steering wheel and also the ride is pretty harsh again it's mainly track focused so so the suspension is pretty harsh pretty hard and you get to used to it but it takes a while especially when you're used to normal road cars you know and normal driving cars not for everybody especially also when you're tall you can easily bump your head against the roof so yeah again it's it's part of the car you have to appreciate it or you hate it but again it feels you're like part of the car when you drive this car because the suspension is so harsh I have to say this sporty characteristic it fits me and I like it but again it's not for everybody so the car is fitted with a dual uh, clutch transmission six speed from Alfa Romeo it's called TCT and uh, combined with the uh, 750 7050 TBI engine which produces 240 horsepower power the no zero to 100 kilometers per hour takes around four and a half seconds like I said, the car is so much fun to drive. And that's already 100 kilometers an hour, and it's that quick. And I'm used to it now, but it took me a while to get used to the acceleration and the, the way the car behaves and the car responds to my throttle input. But um, when you get used to the car and when you understand the car, it's so much fun. Though the ride is so harsh uh, at times, especially when the roads are very uh, uneven, you take it for granted when you drive this car. It doesn't matter really. Uh, it's the, it's like I said already, uh, and I mentioned uh, a few times already. It's so track focused and so precise and so direct. It's so much fun to drive, and you take all those minor points for granted. It's so much fun to drive this. I have never driven like this, any anything like this before, and it's it's totally unique. And maybe people who own a, a Lotus Elise have experienced the same thing, but I can't imagine that it's this quick, though. And of course, the car looks to me, the car looks like nothing else. It's, it's so unique, also in appearance. And the combination with the driving characteristics, characteristics. I think it's uh, one of the best cars you can get at this price point. And uh, yeah, I enjoy it very much. All right, so let's test the zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Here we go. So is there nothing else really negative to tell you about driving this car? Well, yeah, the visibility is poor, you know, you have your side windows of, of side mirrors, of course, but well, looking at the back, there's not a whole lot to see and it's also a bit dimmed, so there's not visibility directly to the back. Also the uh, side view to the rear 
where the sea pillars should be or could be well that's pretty much one big piece of that area which you cannot see anything at all so when pulling out of a parking lot area that's always a risk of getting somebody run down by a car or hitting on other cars so yeah that's always a one to thing to keep in mind again the car is pretty harsh and uh, that's something you get to, you have to get used to uh, but it's also a positive thing because it's also very rewarding when driving this car especially on smooth tarmac and smooth uh, roads it, and it, it, it's, it's a feeling it's hard to describe but it's a plus and a minus thing uh, so to say and yeah that's pretty much it when it comes to driving this car. So, I hope you enjoyed this video about my car, the Alfa Romeo 4C. It's been a fun drive. It's also been fun to finally record this video after such a long time and also owning this car, but also, you know, never got around to properly record this car. So I'm glad I did. So, if you have any questions about this car, Please feel free to ask them and drop your comments below uh, below this video in the comment section. If you thought uh, the video was useful, please uh, remember to give it a thumbs up. That way you support my channel and also aiding me to know keep on pushing videos to YouTube. And also, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. That's the best way to support this channel, of course. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.